Hi there and welcome to another web snippet brought to you by the guys here at Nova Systems. My name's Matthew and this time I'm just going to show you a little bit about using design studies to optimize our design within SolidWorks. Okay, so what you'll see we've got here is a very simple design in this case of a wedding cake. And what we're going to look to do is optimize the design of those supports that you see in there to make sure that we've got uh, sufficient support to hold up the cake, but we're going to try and minimize the mass in this case, so minimize the material used. Having a look at our support now, what I'm going to do is first of all come in and generate some parameters. So coming up to the design study tool uh, on the evaluate toolbar, we can select parameters and you'll see I've already created three parameters. So we've got the support width, which is the width of each of these uh, fins, as you can see from the highlighted dimension. We've got the support length, which is the length of those fins. And we've also got the plate thickness, which is the thickness of each of these end plates. Creating these parameters is very easy. It's just a case of selecting a new box, sticking in the name, so I'm going to just create a dummy variable to show you, and selecting a particular dimension within the graphic interface, which is going to be the dimension that's going to be able to vary. You see the screen is updated with the current value, and we can just hit OK, and that will be added to the list. Next, I'm going to generate my study. So within SolidWorks simulation, I've generated a study which has a basic fixture. I've just fixed the bottom face, and I've applied a force of about 63 newtons, uh, which should be su sufficient to support the weight of the cake on there. I've already set up my mesh with some fine settings so that uh, as the geometry changes, that mesh will still be able to resolve even the thinnest of the uh, features. So you'll see that pop up in a second. There you go. So that's fine. And as this fin gets thinner, we shouldn't have any problem resolving that with the mesh that we've got on there at the moment. So let's just hide that again. And I have just run that to make sure that it does run okay. We don't need to review the results just yet. And you'll also see that we've got a parameters option in this list, which refers to the parameters that we've got in our design study. Creating a design study now is really, really simple. Up on the, the evaluate toolbar again, we can click design study and it will generate a new design study for us. Underneath the variables, you'll see all of the parameters that we had selected before. So in this case, we could grab that dummy variable and we can specify a minimum value and a maximum value and a particular step. Or alternatively, we can just specify particular discrete values or we can specify a range without that step so it can be any value between the two. Next, we can specify some constraints. So this is how we're going to uh, drive our design. So in this case, um, I've already set up a stress sensor. I'm gonna show you how to create a stress sensor now by clicking add sensor. We see the sensor feature manager comes up and we can select something particular that we're after. So in this case, if we have a look at the mass or let's try the simulation data, keeping it on stress and the maximum von Mises stress. I'm interested in it in Pascals and we can hit okay. And you'll see that we've got that stress sensor in there now. So now we can specify whether we want that value to be greater than, less than, or in between two particular values, or we can specify for it just to be monitored so that that value is displayed uh, on the screen as the study is solving and then we can specify a particular stress value. We do a very similar thing in the goals so in this case I've created a sensor for the mass and we're going to aim to minimize that. So if we switch now over to the design study that I've already created you'll see that underneath the constraints uh, where we've got that stress greater than uh, in this case a factor of safety of two um, you'll also notice that I've had to specify which study I'm being, I am including. So we can use multiple studies in here. And so now with that set up, I'm going to check the optimization box. And when we hit run, SolidWorks is going to run through a number of iterations. So in this case, you'll see that it has virtually considered a total of 490 scenarios of di different variations of those parameters. What I've actually done is asked SolidWorks by selecting the options up here, I've asked SolidWorks to run what's referred to as a fast study. So what it's done is run calculations at particular intervals instead of resolving every scenario. And then it's interpolating the data in between those points to try and gather an estimate of all of those studies. You can do an alternative approach by using the high quality, which as you see there is much slower. And what that's going to do is actually solve um, all of those individual steps, which obviously in this case is going to take a very long time. If at this point with the fast study run, I want to have a look at one particular study, I can by all means right click on the scenario and click run and SolidWorks will solve that particular scenario. 
You'll also notice now that as we click through some of the scenarios, our graphics window changes as the geometry updates to what is uh, featured in those uh, parameters on that list. Finally, you'll have a look and see that uh, we've got an initial uh, configuration that we started off with. And finally, SOLIDWORKS has found an optimal, amount, an optimal output, which in this case has reduced the mass down to 6.6 .6 grams, and we've still got a factor of safety above 2. We can also, if we click on any one of these particular scenarios, expand the box on the left-hand side and still have a look at the stress results. Like so. So these are our factor of safety results in this case. Okay, that's a very quick insight into using the design study to optimize our designs. Obviously, you can take that further and further, but uh, that's all I'm going to show you this time. So, as always, if you wanted to get in touch with us here at Anova, you can do so by dropping by our website, as you see on the screen there. You can drop us an email at the support address, which is support at anova-systems.co.uk, or you can give us a call on the number you see on your screen now.